In this video, we're going to talk about Sherwin-Williams Natural Tan SW7567. If this is the color you wanna learn more about and find out some other colors that go with it, then buckle up because it's time for Color Code where we crack the code on paint colors. Natural Tan is naturally a neutral where it's not a color that has a very strong and apparent color hue like red or blue. In technical color theory terms, if we want to get all technical here, any color can actually be deemed as a neutral as long as it's the main color of a space. But when people use neutral conversationally, they usually mean something that is not very saturated, perhaps a bit muted, or even dusty, as I like to describe it. The thing about natural tan is I feel there is a tiny bit of false advertising with its color name because it's not necessarily all that tan when you look at it. I find that tan as a color normally has just a bit more of maybe a brown orange undertone present, while this color seems to be a bit closer to beige with a combination of cream, brown, and gray. One way natural tan is a bit closer to tan than a lighter beige, let's say, is its level of depth. It has enough darkness to it where you won't really think it's a creamy off-white or anything. Its light reflectance value is at 65, which is dark enough to have a noticeable coloration no matter how much light you throw at it. That 65 LRV means it reflects 65% of the light that hits it. And when you compare it to a color like high reflective white with a 93 LRV, that's a pretty big difference in lightness. I do find that colors that sit around the low to mid 60s like natural tan make for excellent wall paint color candidates in a lot of situations. They will also tend to work with a variety of different other coordinating colors as well as varying levels of light whether it's in a bright open hallway or a more dimly lit basement. Natural tan does draw a lot of comparisons to another popular Sherwin-Williams color called accessible beige which any Sherwin fans here they'll know what that is. The interesting thing is to me is, I would argue that natural tan is beigier than accessible beige, but that's just me. With its slightly lighter feeling to it, combined with its lower amount of visible gray, you would think that the more appropriate name for this color would be natural beige instead of natural tan, but. I digress. Before we get into the color pairings themselves, I just want to touch on natural tan as an exterior color. I think it's an excellent candidate for both a main body color that you can use on the majority of your house if you want something that's lighter, but you can also use it as a corresponding trim color for a much darker main color as well because it is light enough to suit that purpose. Colors that are this nicely balanced just work well inside and outside. Now, if this is your first episode of Color Code, Welcome. <laughs> it's lovely to have you help crack the code on natural tan. And the way we do the color pairings here is I've picked four pairings that go with it. A light, a medium, a dark, and an off-white color that all work with natural tan, in my opinion. That way you have a really strong, solid starting point to build your overall palette with. Starting with the light color, we have Ivory Lace which sounds like a white, but it is closer to a light cream color with a 79 LRV. I interpret this color as a purified version of the beige component in natural tan, isolated and illuminated. It's definitely the same family of colors. You could even argue that both can be part of a monochromatic color scheme of beige derivatives. But that being said, this color doesn't really have much of the brown found in natural tan, so there is that distinguishing characteristic between the two. You can use ivory lace in the areas of your home that are not as well lit to introduce some lightness. There is also an opportunity to use both colors side by side on walls and woodwork, for example. Now just be aware that there is not enough of a difference in either color or LRV for the two to really stand out from one another. So if you do go with wall and trim with those two colors, it's going to be a pretty subtle look but you can rely on the clear difference in sheen by going with something flat or matte on the walls and then glossy on the trims and cabinets. Cause contrast can really come in a variety of ways and the finish is definitely one way to do that. Our beige journey continues with our mid-tone color called cool beige. The cool aspect of this color doesn't come from an abundance of blue necessarily, but really it feels more like a combination of a brown tint that has a bit of red added in the background. It's cool like, 
a chocolate frappuccino. And it's also sort of the same color as one. It's different enough from the other where it no longer feels like a true beige in the yellow or creamy sense. This color gets most of its warmth from red and you could almost call it a grouge aka a rougey gray brown. I laughed so hard because one of the commenters down below said, I just talked to a color consultant and they have no idea what rouge is. It's a fake word, I made it up. But it's totally a thing, rougey gray, okay? I'm not crazy, I promise. Now, if you've been following this video so far, you may have noticed that our color palette is fairly monochromatic, if not adjacent, where there's really no polarizing, opposing complementary colors happening. Everything is fairly neutral and close together on the color wheel. I did this intentionally because if you're looking for a color like natural tan, perhaps you wanna stay within that wheelhouse. The dark color is the biggest departure from all of that. And it's not only the darkest color, but also the coolest one, color temperature wise. And it's called mink. This one almost seems like a blackened version of cool beige, where you maybe have a hint of that red brown in the background, but you also get this strong dose of black to give you a cool shade of earthy taupe. Even though this color is deep and saturated, it's still sort of within that neutral category of colors because it doesn't really have a ton of bright vibrancy or a really strong color hue coming through. It fits in well and it's pretty easy to implement whether you wanna throw up an accent wall with any of the other colors we talked about or incorporate mink as a color within an area rug, for example. You may already have something resembling this color in your flooring, whether it's vinyl or engineered hardwood. This type of taupey gray color is pretty common these days. As for the white paint color to finish off the pairings, I went with Greek Villa because it's a timeless marble white that suits the warmth found in the other colors, but also doesn't overpower anything either. It's clean, warm, and rejuvenating. There's another natural color by Sherwin-Williams right over here, and the pairings in this one are a little different than the ones we talked about a second ago. So might as well check it out.